All right, so this is the second part of the last packet that I gave. Fundamentals of probability is the next section that we're going to talk about. First, we'll start off establishing what an experiment is, any occurrence in which the outcome is uncertain. So an example of that is flipping a coin. Sample space would be all possible outcomes in an experiment. So heads and tails would be the sample space of your experiment. Normally, we notate or denote your sample space with the letter S. Your event is just any subset of the sample space. So tails um, could be your event. So what's the probability of landing tail? You know, tails would be your event. So the way we would compute the probability is we take the number of outcomes in your event, place it over the no number of outcomes in your sample space. So looking at flipping this coin, uh, we want to know the probability of landing tails. The sample space is heads and tails. So the number of outcomes in your sample space is two. Your event is landing tail, so the number of outcomes in your event is one. So you place that one over two, and that will be your probability, which is 50%. All right, a single die is rolled. Find a probability of rolling. First, we want to know the probability of rolling a three. So your sample space, if you um, don't remember how a die work or how dice work, um, you have six spaces, the numbers one through six. So we have six choices or six possible outcomes in your sample space. So that's why we have the number of our sample space six. This six and this six does not have anything to do with each other. If this was a nine, if it was one, two, three, four, five, nine, the number of outcomes in your sample space would still be six. You have six possible outcomes. So that's where the six comes from. Your event is rolling a three. Three is just one outcome. So you place that one over the six. You got a one out of six chance of rolling a three. You want to know the probability of rolling an even number? Your sample space hasn't changed because you haven't changed the problem. So that number is still six. But there are three even numbers, two, four, six. So you place the three over the six, and that's one over two. When you reduce that fraction down, once again, you're getting a 50% chance of rolling the even number. You want to find a probability of rolling a number greater than three. Sample space is still six. Numbers that are greater than three, four, five, six. So we have three outcomes that are greater than uh, greater than three. So three over six will reduce down to one half. All right. Uh, looking at our standard 52 card deck. Standard 52 card deck does not have any jokers. Characteristics of your standard 52 card deck, you have four suits, clubs, spades, hearts, diamonds, 13 cards in each suit. You have 10 regular cards and three face cards, two black suits, clubs and spades, three red suits, hearts and diamonds, three face cards, king, queen, jack, and then 10 regular cards, your ace, and then two through 10. So your ace is not a face, according to your book. Ace is one of your regular cards. So you're dealt one card from the standard 52 card deck, find the probability of being dealt a king. So we know that the number of cards that we have, the number of our sample space, the total number of possible outcomes is 52, 52 cards in your deck. Then the number of kings you have is four. We have four kings, one card or one king per uh, suit. So we take that four, place it over 52, reduce it, that will be one over 13. All right, what's the probability of being dealt a heart? We have 13 hearts in the deck. 13 over 52, we'll reduce down to one four. What's the probability of being dealt the king of hearts? So how many king of hearts are there? There's just one. So you do one over 52. You know, there's still 52 cards in the deck. Got a one out of 52 chance of getting a king of hearts. What's the probability of getting a black card? where there are 26 black cards, 13 clubs and 13 spades. Place the 26 over that 52, that reduces down to one half. All right, that's it for 11.4. 11.5, probability with the fundamental counting principle, permutations and combinations. So basically, it takes all of the sections uh, before this one and uh, combine them into one section, bringing everything together. So what is the probability? that a man will go first and a man will go last. We talked about the sample space of this problem already. Just generically, how many different ways could you create a lineup that would be that six, five, four, three, two, one. Just generically, no stipulations. You multiply each one of those numbers and you would get 720. Now your event 
has stipulations on the first box and the last box. You want a man to go first and a man to go last. Where there are five men out of the six comedians, remember there was only one female. So we have five choices in this for this first box. Once I use one of those men, when I go to this last box, I will have four choices. So the first box is five, the last box is four, because that's how many men I had at the time or had left at the time. Now, when I go to the second box, anybody can go. So now we have a four here because that includes the three men that are left and that one woman. So you have four and then you do your generic countdown, three, two, one. Multiply those numbers together and you get 480. So you put the 480 over the 720, that reduces down to two thirds. What's the probability of a comedian that has the first name uh, that begins with K goes first and a man goes last? So when we go back to our list, we have two comedians that had the first name that begins with the K, Kevin Hart and Cat Williams. So for the first box, we have two choices. Then when we go to this last box, we're talking about a man going last. And so at this point, we have four men left. So four goes here, and then when we go to the middle, the second box, our generic countdown, this four represents the three men that are left, plus that one woman. And we do our generic countdown, multiply those numbers together, we get 192, place that 192 over the 720. That's the same 720 um, from the last problem. Haven't changed problems all the way, just changed stipulation. So 654321 is at 720, 192 over 720, reduces down to four or 15 for your final answer. All right, the lottery, or the lotto is set up so that you can choose six different numbers from one through 53. If the six numbers are drawn, you win. With one lotto ticket, what is the probability of winning? So we know that our sample space is gonna be set up in such a way you wanna know how many different ways can I choose six out of 53. That would be a combination, there's no order to it. Um, so 53C6 would be 22,957,480. And when you're talking about your event, it says with one lotto ticket. So that's one combination of six. With one ticket, what's the probability of winning? So um, now if I had, the, if you were to look at the actual notes, these zeros aren't there. It's just one over this 22,957,480. So what I was doing here though was showing you guys your futile attempt to actually trying to win the lottery. So really it's supposed to just be a one there. But um, if I look at this number, it would be 0 0.00000000436. That's so I was telling the class that if I want to convert it to a percentage, sometimes percentages make us feel better or better analyze the problem. I would have to move my decimal to the right two places. So I'll still have five zeros in front of that four as a percentage. So I don't even have a 1% chance. I'm not even close to having a 1% chance of winning. So if I want to get rid of these zeros, what I have to do is add a zero behind how many tickets I would like to purchase. So to get rid of this one zero right here, I will add a zero here. There will be 10 tickets to purchase. Get rid of this zero, 100 tickets. Get rid of this zero, this zero, zero. So if I start adding zeros, I'm right here, I'm at 100,000 tickets, but I still haven't gotten to a 1% chance. So if I wanna move this decimal place to behind this four to give me a 4% chance of winning, I would have to purchase 1 million tickets. So that's where all those zeros came, came from. I was showing the last class that actually had these notes in class. It would take a million tickets to get a 4% chance of winning this lottery. And so now you can see how the lottery can grow so exponentially and get so large um, because it takes a lot of money to have a, a slim chance to actually win. And if these were a dollar a piece, you would already have a million dollars uh, with a 4% chance if you just save your money. All right, I believe this is the last example out of this section. A club consists of five men and seven women. Three members are selected at random for a conference. Find the probability that a group consists of three men and a group consists of one man and two women. So the sample space includes everyone, all possible outcomes, that's 12C3. So we have 12 numbers all together, five and seven. Five men, seven women, there's 12. How many different ways can I choose three out of those 12? That's going to be 220. 
Now the three men can only come out of the five, the five men. So that's going to be five C3. So that's 10, 10 over 120 reduces out, reduces down to one over 22. The next one, talking about one man, two women. So that one man will come out of the five men that's a part of the group. So that's five C1, which is just five. The two women will come out of the seven women that are in the group, seven C2, which would be 21. Now, just like when we did the Democrats and the Republicans, we multiply those two numbers together. That's five times 21, which is 105. That 105 would be our top number of our probability, 105 over 220 reduces down to 21 or 44. All right, let me know if you have any questions.